we are going to start the first chapter in our chemistry textbook and name of the chapter some basic concepts of chemistry and in this chapter we are going to uh, study some fundamentals of chemistry we know the application of chemistry is what very large in our day to day life or uh, what the effect or the importance of chemistry is very much so in this chapter we are going to discuss about the fundamentals that is the fundamental of the chemistry matter and the classification of matter then how the particles are arranged in this matter then uh, one important section is the molecular mass and to find the molecular formula of the compounds then some concentration terms etc and uh, also we are going to discuss some rules and or some laws like law of constant proportion law of multiple proportion law of conservation of uh, what mass we already studied in the lower classes and all these things are we are going to discuss in this chapter let's start with matter yes what is matter all of you know everything around us is matter for example the pen pencil dust bench all these are matter then what is matter yes anything that has mass and occupies space is called a matter what is matter anything that has mass and occupies space is called a matter examples there's lot of examples are there around us chair dust bench pen all these are matter and we already studied the properties of matter this matter is made up of small particles what we called as atoms or molecules also in this matter all the particles are very closely packed or in sometimes very loosely packed or sometimes there is intermediate between these two based on that we can classify matter mainly into three the first one solid state then liquid state and gaseous state let's discuss some of the properties of these states of matter as we already said the matter we classified as solid liquid and gaseous state and how these state of matter differ from each other and the first case solid state see example for solid state yes the pen that we use or the pencil or dust bench or book all this are solid state we know they have a definite shape and size also it needs a what space in order to accommodate isn't it yes so in the solid state we can say the particles are very closely packed what's the particle yes the particles are very closely packed and there is no space between these particle we can also call the spaces interspaces or oids 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 v o i d s oids and here there is no oids or interstitial space in between these particles they are very closely packed so what happen yes they have a definite shape or size and the next one in the liquid state we know the liquid water then oil petrol all these are exist in liquid state what's the peculiarity of that yes they have the tendency to flow and the property that the particles are loosely packed okay the particles are loosely packed so what happen yes the particles are free to move but in the case of solid state the particles are not free to move they are rigid but here in liquid state they have the tendency to flow what because uh, because of the reason the particles are wet what the loosely held then in the gaseous state we know different gases are there the oxygen that we breathe the carbon dioxide that we exhale all these are gases we know they diffuse very fast diffuse what do you mean by diffusion yes intermixing of different matter is called diffusion and in the case of gaseous state the diffusion is very fast that means they spread very fast we know if we open a perfume what happen yes the smell spread everywhere easily so in the case of gaseous state what happen yes the particles are very loosely bounded so so what happen yes they exert a pressure where it kept because they collide each other they collide each other as a result what happen yes it exert a pressure on the walls of the container so we can say gas exert pressure okay yes once more the states of matter for easy way we classified as solid liquid and gaseous state 
in solid state the particles are very closely packed also the particles there are no space between the particle or inner space between the particle okay we studied about the states of matter and the classification i think all of you understand that about the states of matter solid state liquid state gaseous state and my question is that are these states of matter interchangeable yes of course we can interchange these states of matter that means we can interchange solid to liquid or liquid to solid or again we can convert liquid to gas or gas to liquid and what's the process called we want to uh, study that process then the conversion of solid to liquid as you all know the conversion of solid to liquid the process called a melting okay and what is melting point yes that's the temperature at which a solid melts that's an easy way or we can say the temperature at which the liquid pressure becomes equal to the vapor pressure we studied in the lower class and here solid convert to liquid what's the name of the process as melting and what's the melting point of ice yes 0 degree celsius the melting point of ice and the conversion of solid to liquid is called melting that process so we can say we can convert solid into gas and the next process liquid to gas we know when we heat it or when we boil water what happen is it easily what vaporizes we know in the case of water it boils at 100 degree celsius and vaporization starts and here liquid to gas the process called what vaporization and the next process solid to gas and sometimes the solid directly changes into gas we know in the case of camphor and ammonium chloride in all these so naphthalene okay in all these what happen the solid directly changes to gas and what's the name of the process called yes sublimation okay once more solid to liquid the process called melting and liquid to gas the process called what vaporization and solid to gas the process called what sublimation examples of sublimation yes naphthalene ball ammonium chloride all these are example then also we can convert back and liquid can be converted into solid by the process called deposition and also the gas can convert it into liquid by the process called what condensation so we can say by changing the condition of pressure and temperature we can easily interchange these states of matter so without doubt we can say these states of matter are interchangeable and based on the particle arrangement we classify matter into solid liquid and gaseous state and here we can classify the matter based on their properties or the based on the composition we can classify the matter broadly into two mixtures and pure substances are you familiar with the term mixtures and pure substances and the mixtures again classify as homogeneous mixtures heterogeneous mixtures then pure substance again classify as elements and compounds okay let's see what's all this and the matter the first one mixture matter we studied anything that has mass and occupies space and mixture say one example for mixture yes salt solution salt solution is a mixture salt solution which are the components present in salt solution yes salt and water salt and water and here the quantity or the substance which present in bulk amount is called solvent and another substance is called solute we know and the salt solution what's the peculiarity of the salt solution yes two different components mixed together that is mixtures two different components mixed together we get what mixture all of you know the mixture that we eat that contain lot of substance are there like that the mixture means one two or more substance not only two substance two or more substance alloys all of you familiar with alloys what are alloys yes the mixtures of metals mixtures of two or more metals we know brass bronze steel all these are alloys and the alloys also mixtures and the mixtures we classify as two types homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture in the case of salt solution if we take a glass full of water and add one or two spoon of what salt 
what happened yes we get a complete solution or we cannot distinguish the salt particles in that solution or we can say the uniform composition throughout that's homogeneous mixture the composition of all the substances is uniform throughout is called what yes homogeneous mixture example salt solution in salt solution we said salt and water present and there is no distinguish between what salt and water no what the no difference between that salt particle we cannot distinguish the salt particle from that and the next one alloys alloys we know i said steel steel is an alloy of what iron and carbon in that also we cannot distinguish iron particle carbon particle like that the component the, the substance is what steel there is no distinguish between that so these are what homogeneous mixtures or we can say the mixtures with uniform composition throughout is called what homogeneous mixture and next one heterogeneous mixture then what is heterogeneous mixture yes the example a mixture of rice and sand rice and sand we know in rice and sand we can separate what the rice or we can it is very clear to visible the difference what component or oil and water oil and water the mixture of oil and water is a heterogeneous mixture we know because of the density different what happen when we mix oil in water the oil forms a separate layer or we can see the oil above the water so oil and water is an example for what heterogeneous mixture then we can define heterogeneous mixtures as the mixtures in which there is no uniform composition throughout okay that's about heterogeneous mixtures once more we classify matter as mixtures and pure substance we discussed about this mixture what homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures in homogeneous mixture the composition is same throughout and heterogeneous mixture the composition is different and it is easy to remember using the what examples the next one pure substance as an example for pure substance c6h12o6 what is this c6h12o6 is glucose that is glucose and we know it contain definite composition 6 carbon 12 hydrogen again 6 carbon we can write like this c is 2 h is 2 o in the ratio 6 is 2 12 is 2 6 or we can simplify as 1 is 2 2 is 2 1 or we can say in pure substance the definite composition mixtures we know if we want to prepare salt solution we add salt then water and though there is no proportion of that components present in it but in the case of pure substance what's the happen yes it contain definite composition all the particles contain what definite composition and we classify the pure substance into elements and compound element we know say one example for element yes iron iron is an element iron or carbon another element all these are element that means an element is made up of same type of particles what we call as atoms or molecules okay an element is made up of same type of atoms or molecules or generally we can say particles and in the case of compounds elements combine together to form compounds in this glucose glucose is a pure substance but it's a compound why we can call it as a compound yes because it contain carbon carbon is an element then hydrogen another element oxygen another element they combine together in fixed ratio to form what compounds okay this is about compounds then the classify the pure substance pure substance means the substances which contain or the matter which contain definite proportion and we cannot separate the component from the mixture using simple method for example in glucose if we want to separate the carbon hydrogen oxygen etc we cannot simply separate by physical method or by hand picking or filtration like that we cannot separate by simple method if we want to separate the carbon hydrogen oxygen etc we can separate them what chemically but cannot separate physically okay that's about compounds or that's about the pure substance once more we classify matter as mixtures and pure substances mixture means what it's a composition of two or different matter then we classify mixtures as homogeneous as well as heterogeneous mixtures homogeneous mixtures means the mixtures with uniform composition 
and heterogeneous mixtures means mixtures with non-uniform composition and here pure substance what elements and compounds elements means same type of atoms uh, constitute elements and compounds means the elements combine together to form compounds in fixed ratio and the case of pure substance we can we cannot simply separate these particles but in the case of mixture we can separate the particle by the physical methods also they mix they not form chemical bond between the particles and the properties of matter mainly there are two properties of matter we know yes chemical properties as well as physical properties chemical property means we can observe such property by the destruction of that compound for example melting point boiling point all these are chemical properties physical property means what yes length then the temperature of a body all these are what physical properties as we know there are some units we use in order to represent these physical property and the units are derived from international system of units we commonly called as SI units and there are seven fundamental units in this SI system or international system of units you already familiar with this system units in the physics let's see which are the seven fundamental units the first one length are you familiar with length length is normally represented by small letter l and the unit name of the SI unit the SI unit used in the system according to this system for length is what meter is represented by small letter m next one mass we know what is mass yes mass is the amount of matter present in a particular substance but it's different from weight weight is the gravitational force of earth oh here mass is the amount of substance present or amount of matter present in a particular substance that is mass and mass we normally represented by the letter small letter m the si unit what is this si unit yes kilogram also we use another unit gram all this is another unit gram quintile foot unit but here si unit the internationally accepted unit of mass is kilogram and next one time time is represented by small letter t but capital letter t is there what's capital letter t yes the next one temperature and time is represented by small letter t the si unit is second the time is already mentioned as hour then minute like that but here in si system of unit we use time or the we use the what unit second for time and next one electric current electric current is represented by i and the unit ampere ampere it's represented by capital letter a and next one temperature temperature is represented by capital t but time is represented by small letter t and temperature kelvin is used also degree celsius is used in our chemical labs and degree celsius if a value is given in degree celsius then how can we convert into kelvin for example 100 degree celsius how can we convert 100 degree celsius to kelvin yes add 273.15 100 degree celsius means 100 plus 273.15 that is equal to 373.15 kelvin by adding what 273.15 to the value of degree celsius it's converted into another scale called what yes kelvin scale we know in clinical laboratory fahrenheit scale is used or there the temperature is measured in degree fahrenheit here the si unit the commonly used si unit for temperature is kelvin represented by k and next one amount of substance we know the amount of substance is represented by n and small what is one mole yes we know the value of one mole one mole contains 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 particles that's one mole we represent as one mole and the amount of substance represented by small letter n and unit is mole okay and next one luminous intensity luminous intensity is represented by i nu or iv and the unit is candela 
once more the seven fundamental systems so seven international system units are length mass time electric current temperature amount of substance luminous intensity then the units are very important length meter mass kilogram time second electric current ampere then temperature kelvin amount of substance mole luminous intensity candela sorry next one is some terms related to oh, these uh, chemical properties and the first one mass and weight we already discussed mass means the amount of matter present in a particular substance there is ma uh, what mass but weight means it is a gravitational force experienced by that object that is called what weight okay and mass is entirely different from weight there is diff two different concepts are this mass of the substance is the amount of matter present in it for example uh, if we take 1 kg of rice suppose it contain 20000 rice particle then the mass means that mass of those those 20000 particles but the weight is relative the weight of object changes with the gravitational force of attraction but mass is always constant is it clear mass is always const constant because it's the amount of matter present in that substance but weight is relative because it depends on the gravitational force so we can say weight is the force exerted by gravity on an object okay that's the difference between mass and weight and the next term is volume and volume we know we want to study the unit of volume unit of volume is generally represented as meter cube volume is length into length into length that is volume a cube that is volume and here the unit is what meter cube and normally we use another uh, unit for the volume but not represented in the si system what is it yes liter so in order to convert this liter milliliter we know 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter also another unit that we commonly use decimeter cube centimeter cube etc and in that sense 1000 cm cube is equal to 1 decimeter cube that's about volume and next one density what is density yes mass per unit volume is called what density then how can we derive the unit for density we know the mass what is the unit of mass as per si system the unit of mass is kilogram then volume what is volume as yes, meter cube or we can say kilogram per meter cube is one of the unit of density and the unit is there gram per what centimeter cube gram per centimeter cube or kilogram per meter cube these are commonly used units of density what is density yes mass per unit volume that is called density and mass and weight difference between mass and weight mass of the substance is the amount of matter present in it and weight is the force exerted by gravity on an object and volume volume meter cube is generally represented the unit as the unit of volume and the conversion 1 liter is commonly taken as 1000 milliliter then density mass per unit volume in order to derive and these are derived units these are not fundamental unit fundamental units are for what the mass then length like that time temperature for these seven fundamental units are there and other units are derived from uh, that seven fundamental units okay so the density the derived unit is kilogram per meter cube or gram per centimeter cube